And today we're going to be talking about dust collectors. I've got a HEPA Cyclone style here and a new gyro style over here on the right. And I'm going to be comparing the two, showing some of the differences and trying to help you make a decision. Check it out. All right, so the dust collector here on my left is something that you may be familiar with. This uses a cyclone separator to basically let the large chips fall into a bin while the smaller dust particles go down into a bag and the smallest stuff gets filtered by a HEPA filter on the side. Now, this style dust collector you may or may not be familiar with. This is a new style from a company called Harvey Industrial, and this is a gyro uh, separator. So basically air goes in down here at the bottom. It goes through these sort of centrifuges up here where you get different size chips fall into a bin. And then there are some HEPA filters here on the end uh, that keep those small particles out of the air. Now these are similar in price. This is about $2,000 from Grizzly Industrial plus shipping about $2,250, uh, one and a half horsepower. And this right now is about $2,300 plus shipping. So this is a little more expensive, but there are some key differences between the two of them and about airflow, space and stuff like that. So let's kind of look closely at them and we'll start with the Grizzly. All right, so over at the Cyclone, this is a Grizzly G0703HEP. Now they don't make this exact model anymore, but I'll put a link down below to a very similar model that I said is about $2,000. So this is a one and a half horsepower. This will run off a 110 or 220, and it claims 775 CFM uh, with a couple other specs on here. Now this is a HEPA dust collector based on this filter system here on the back. So basically any fine particles that don't fall either into into the bin or into the bag should be filtered at a HEPA level through here. And my friend Jonathan Katz Moses did an amazing video a couple months ago about the importance of good dust filtration in your shop and how dangerous small particle dust is, especially if you're working with exotic wood. So check out his video. I'll put a link to it down below. But if you're going to spend money on a dust collector, if you're going to use a dust collector, get a HEPA filter. If you're not going to use a HEPA filter, you're honestly probably doing yourself a disservice because you're putting a lot of particles up into the air and then you're going to breathe them in the whole time you're in your shop. They're going to get on everything and it can really cause serious health issues. So this dust collector has a six inch port over here, which is typical for a larger collector. And then you'd use a splitter or something like this to get you down into the kind of the more normal shop size four inch port. So this would just pop on there like that. And then you can go up and down or if you turned it, you can go side to side, uh, go out whatever you want. So I have one of the ports blocked. Um, this is the dust collector that I've been using for my planer, joiner, and bandsaws. So I'll turn this on so we can see how loud it is, and then I'm going to do a quick airflow reading with this anemometer, um, which isn't really going to be a great representation of the CFM, but it'll be a good comparison to compare the airflow at the 6-inch port between this and the Harvey. All right, so this is an anemometer. It's a cheap tool. It basically uses a little tiny fan to measure how quickly air is moving. So this isn't going to be a really scientific test, but we'll have a baseline number in miles per hour of airflow at the six inch port so we can compare to the other machine. So that got to about 25-ish, 25.5 miles per hour. Now the other thing I want to check is how loud the machine is. So I'm going to stand about, you know, whatever it is, a foot away, turn this thing on and uh, we'll see what the maximum decibel rating we get is. So at the peak, we hit about 100 <clears throat> decibels close to the port, averaged in like the mid 80s, which isn't so bad for a shop tool. And it'll actually get quieter if you have a hose on it and have that hose plugged in. Um, but moving on to the next kind of part about this is once you've got this thing filled with dust, you got to empty it. Now, one of the things that I didn't really like about this dust collector, because um, I used this for a number of years, was emptying this bin was a pain. <clears throat> you know, you have to undo these clips pull this thing off and there's no way to know if this thing is full. Now, some of them have a little sight glass on them. This one doesn't. 
And I guess that's maybe just kind of a feature of the unit itself. But what would happen is if I would inevitably fill this thing up into the column and then uh, it'd be a real pain to empty. Now this has a little bin with wheels on it and then it's got a hose on the back which uh, sucks the bag out to make sure that you get the maximum in it. And I'm going to do a little bit of math um, while I'm editing this and I'm going to put on the screen how large this bin is. It is about 19 inches in diameter and let's call it 20 inches tall. So whatever that math is, is right here. That's how much dust, uh, how many, how much chips this thing can hold. Now, aside from not knowing when it's empty, it is not so bad. You can get this thing out. You pull the bag out, uh, do whatever you got to do. And it makes a pretty good seal. You can see getting the clips back on is a little bit cumbersome. Now that's for the bigger chips. So if you're using a planer uh, and then dust goes into this bag and honestly in the probably two years that I've had this, I've never had to empty this bag because there really isn't just a lot of fine dust that gets down into the bag. Um, when you do though want to get fine dust out of the filters, there's a handle on top that you crank and it knocks all the latent dust off the filter in here and drops it down into the bag. But this you would just undo a strap. Um, I found that these kind of straps can be a little bit annoying, not when you're taking them off, but when you're putting them back on, you have to hold that bag in place, tighten a strap, try to get that on there. And you don't want any leaks in this system because then that dust is just going to pour out with all that air coming in. Now space is very important in everyone's shop, especially mine. So I'll just give you some general dimensions on how much room this thing takes up and then we'll go and check out the Harvey. So this unit's about 24 inches deep from end to end with this filter sticking out the side, about 50 inches wide and about 69, five, nine, yeah, 69 inches tall. Put those dimensions right down here. Let's look at the Harvey. All right, so this is the Harvey G700, a gyro style dust collector. Now, it's a very different design than the Cyclone machine. And the purpose of this design is to basically force your particles through the filter so you're not relying on gravity to try to get those really lightweight particles to fall down into the bag and kind of keep them out of the air. Now this is a 220 machine. It's considerably heavier than that. It weighs about 450 pounds, um, but it has some features on it that I really like, uh, one of which is just the size of it. Now you can see right here, um, this thing is taking up a little more in the width but it's low enough that I could easily like put a bench top or put this underneath a table and utilize the space above it. Um, there's a couple things about this that we'll look at like how to empty it. But the first thing we'll do going back to kind of how we tested that is we're going to check the airflow at the six inch port um, and see how, what the velocity is of that air going into the machine. So the Harvey uses a VFD to control the speed of the air. Now there's a, a range of, speeds that you can get out of this. The lowest is at 40 hertz, the highest is at 75 hertz. So we're gonna start with this at its lowest uh, at the 40, 40 hertz. We'll see what the airflow is there and then we'll crank it up to the 75 and we'll see what the airflow is at that frequency. Now the other thing to note is that the Harvey off the bat is rated for 1,110 CFM versus the Grizzly, which is rated for 750 CFM. So it's more than a 30% additional airflow from the manufacturer. So I'm expecting this to pull more air uh, through the anemometer. Now this is So right now we're down at the lowest, the 40 hertz. Getting about 26.5, 25, 26.2 miles per hour. And now we'll turn it up to the maximum setting. That's at 58.6.
So we wound up at about 58.6 miles per hour at the max speed, and now we'll just check the volume right at the port, and then I'll move my phone up towards the camera about two feet away, and we'll see what the difference is. So we're gonna reset the max. So we wound up at about 106 maximum decibels uh, that was right at the port and then averaged out in like the low 90s when I was about two feet away. Now that is uh, four or five decibels higher than the average that we got out of the Grizzly. And again, without a hose on there, you are getting probably the loudest that the machine will ever be. So now talking about emptying this and kind of what happens when you collect dust through this. Now it's got this door on the front, so you need to have access to the front of the machine in order to empty it. But the way you empty it is a little bit easier than with the Grizzly. It's certainly easier than dealing with that barrel. So you flip down this front and you undo this really nice cast latch. And then it drops out a bin on wheels. And then boom, there are your bins. Now this is for your larger chips and this is gonna be for your smaller dust. Uh, this is a brand new unit, so I do have some extra bags in there. Um, and I'll measure the size of these bins. Really, the, the chip bin is really the one that I'm thinking most about and we'll compare it to the size of the Grizzly bin. This is about 19 by 16 by almost 18. So whatever that is in cubic inches, I'll put it right there. So it's definitely easy to get this out and empty it. When you're done, you slide it in, get this latch on there, and then it makes a seal. The other thing is that this has a um, bin sensor on it. So when the bin is full, uh, an alarm is gonna go off, so you don't wind up with, you know, basically backfilling the machine with chips, which I used to do in the Grizzly all the time. Now this is also a HEPA filter and you, the way you cycle the filters and get the you know, little bit of dust particles off of it, similar to the Grizzly, is you have these little knobs. And essentially what that is, there's a little flap in there that's hitting the pleats of the filter, knocking all the dust down. And then if you wanna clean where that little dust is falling, you take these ports off, and then you put your dust collector hose back in there, or you can use a shop vac to vacuum out these reservoirs on the bottom, which is basically where all that little, you know, the very, very fine dust that gets stuck in your filters uh, winds up. Now this unit, as you can see, is also on wheels, so you can roll it around, and then when you figure out where you want it to be, there are some feet on the other side that you screw out, and it'll basically plant itself in place. This, like I said, is almost 500 pounds, so once you get it kind of stopped, uh, I don't really think it's gonna go anywhere. Let's talk about the size. So again, talking about space and sort of a smaller shop size and how much room you take up with your machinery, especially something kind of critical like a dust collector is important. Um, now with this machine, it is longer than the Grizzly. Uh, it's about 58, 59 inches wide. It's the same 24 inches deep, but then it is only about 35 inches tall. And that's important because the 35 inches tall, for me, this is like a perfect bench height. Um, I could basically drop a piece of plywood on top of this and I could use this as a workbench as opposed to this unit, which is about 10 inches smaller in its width, but I can't use any of the vertical space above it. Um, and looking at where my table saw is, I don't plan on putting this underneath my table saw table, but I could imagine that it's a very close height where I could probably have this underneath an outfeed table and I'd be able to utilize that space above it, which kind of reclaims that square footage. One thing I forgot to mention is that that six inch dust port on the Harvey uh, does come with a splitter from the factory. So you have a four inch port coming out over here and then there's actually a reducer that they put on this one, a rubber boot, which brings you down to I think a two inch. So you could use like a shop vac hose on it if you wanted to, or you could put another four inch on there, put some blast gates, similar to what you could do with the Grizzly. I do like that this one is clear though, because I can see what's making it through into my machine, uh, which is always good to make sure if you don't have a clog or something like that, if you can see the machine, you can see if there's a clog. Also, so both of these machines have remote controls. Uh, the, the Harvey just has an on and off. The Grizzly does have a start, stop, and a time feature. I'm not sure why you would want a timer on a dust collector, 
because you don't really ever want a dust collector to be on and then turn off later if it's running directly to a machine. I have timers on like my air filters that are up on the ceiling, but I'm not sure that I would ever use the timer feature. I know I've never used it on the Grizzly, so just something to think about. All right, so one of the things I think is relevant if we're gonna talk about dust collectors is how much airflow you get at the end of a four inch hose, because most shops are gonna use this. So I'm just gonna do a quick airflow off of this one on the end of this, whatever it is, six foot hose, and then I'll use the same hose on the Harvey and we'll just compare the airflow over there. About 78, yeah, about 77, 78 miles per hour. All right, so full transparency, Harvey sent me this dust collector and I haven't used it yet. And that's why I didn't really share my opinion about the way that it performs. I just wanted to give sort of information about the difference between the two. Now, personally, I opted to get this dust collector because of the way I think it's gonna help me save space in my shop and because I think it's gonna work better in terms of emptying my dust collector, especially when I'm using the planer. When I'm using the planer, I have a 20 inch planer that produces a absolute ton of chips. And when I'm using it on this, sometimes I get so frustrated that I have to empty this bin and how it's such a pain to get to it and empty it that I'll use my lunchbox planer if the board is small enough and I'll just hook it right up to my smaller dust collector or I'll just use it outside without dust collection. And that's really irritating because I have this shop with this big industrial seven horsepower planer and sometimes I don't wanna use it because my dust collection isn't ideal. So I'm hoping with the Harvey because it's easier to empty and because it's got that bin sensor, it's gonna just make my life that much easier. I'm not getting rid of this Grizzly. I'm actually gonna replace another one of my just straight up bag dust collectors with it. So this will still be around, but I think the Harvey is going to be a big improvement for me in my sort of main wood shop over here. Also because I'm going to put a tabletop above it or some material racks above it and be able to recapture the space that I wasn't able to use with the Grizzly. It was completely dead space above this thing and I really need room in here because I'm like busting at the seams with material and tools. And like I said, the price point is somewhat comparable between the two, but this machine comes in 110. The Harvey is 220. So you're going to need 220 for it, um, which you might not have in your shop. So you might need to do that. Again, another Jonathan Katz Moses video. He's got a great video about doing 220 in a small shop. So check that out down below. And something to note about your electricity is that a 220 volt machine will run more efficiently than a 110 volt machine and actually draw less power and have less of an amp surge on your panel because of the way that the motors ran and all that. So Keep that in mind. About 2000 bucks for this machine, 2300 at the moment for this one, um, but a lot heavier uh, and definitely a more industrial unit. I feel like this thing is completely sealed up. Like I don't think that I'm gonna have any dust leaks out of this machine where this thing, if I were to turn off all the lights in here and turn this on with a flashlight, you'll see little shots of dust floating everywhere, which you know is getting in my lungs and getting all over my shop. I wanna say thank you to Harvey for sponsoring this video by providing me with this machine and I'm definitely gonna do a follow-up in a couple months once I've used this and share that information. So if you wanna see that, subscribe to my channel down below and let me know what you think about this style dust collector. For me, this is something that's completely new. When I first saw clips of these, I thought like that's such a strange design for a machine. But then the more that I thought about it, the more I thought about reclaiming that, you know, uh, vertical space above it, I thought it was a great idea. And I'm really looking forward to giving it a shot and seeing how it's going to change my workflow here in the shop. If you're interested in the Harvey, the G700, or I think they might even make bigger ones, uh, check out the links down below. And I'll put a link to this machine as well. So you can kind of see it and compare the two. 1100 CFMs versus 750, one and a half horsepower versus I think about two horsepower in this and just a totally different way of managing the chips and the dust. And I think that one's going to be more efficient, but only time will tell. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the two machines or if you think there's something that I missed when I was kind of doing my little analytic test here. And I'd be happy to follow up with that video over on my Instagram, which you can follow right here at Make Everything Shop. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, more videos talking about tools and making stuff in my wood and metal shop. Again, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and I hope to see you on the next video.